Hey, what's up guys? JC here, continuing with the Beta Flight playlist. If you haven't been watching the playlist, look in the description below for the link to it. Now, I was going to make a video on how to calibrate the accelerometer, but it would have been a 15 second video. So instead, I'm going to answer a bunch of questions that I get concerning the accelerometer. So first up, how do you calibrate it? Make sure your multi rotor is on a flat and level surface. Click Calibrate Accelerometer. Wait for it, and now it's done. That's it. Now I will say that this will apply to beta flight and clean flight both, but if you use INAV, it's actually a, a six step process. If you want to check out my INAV videos, then find my INAV playlist. What is INAV? INAV is basically the same thing as clean flight and beta flight, except it's geared more towards really big multi rotors uh, using GPS and a bunch of fancy stuff like that. What is the point of calibrating the accelerometer? Basically, it tells the flight controller what level is supposed to look like. Why does the flight controller care where your level is? Because you need that for your other flight modes. You have angle, horizon, and acro. Angle is the easiest. It will not allow you to go past a 15, or my bad, 45 degree angle, meaning you can't do rolls and flips. Basically, it's doing everything it possibly can to correct all of your mistakes. Horizon it does allow you to do flips and rolls, but when you're not doing flips and rolls, it flies much like angle. Then you have acro, which is, I'll do a separate video, but uh, it's basically no assistance whatsoever and does not need the accelerometer. How often do I calibrate it? Personally, I calibrate it every single time I go into beta flight. Uh, so I really couldn't tell you how often it needs a recalibration, I just do it out of habit. JC, I used to see my multi-rotor moving on the screen when I moved it in my hands, but now it's not doing that. Now it's just staying perfectly still. Why is that? Well, you probably have it disabled, or maybe sometimes when you flash new firmware, it automatically comes disabled. To fix that, go to Configuration, scroll down, and either enable it if you want it, or disable it if you don't want it. So I can disable it, save and reboot. Now I can violently shake my multi-rotor and it's not doing anything on the screen because we're not using the accelerometer. Why would you ever want to disable the accelerometer? Well, uh, we know it's used for angle and horizon, but if you only fly an acro, then there's no point in even using it. That leads to the next question of, well, why disable it? Why not just fly an acro and just leave it turned on but don't use the other flight modes? Because of the CPU load, you want this to be as low as possible. I would say 35% or lower. The lower the CPU load, the better your, basically the brain of the flight controller can think. Uh, that's a short explanation. By disabling all these sensors, it will actually decrease your CPU load. Now my CPU load is so low because I just built this multi rotor earlier today. I haven't even set it up yet, but uh, just to give you an idea, I'm plugging in a F3 processor flight controller. I was currently on a F4 processor flight controller. That's another reason why it was so low. Uh, so now we're sitting at about 22%. If we disable it, it dropped down to 11%. So we saved 11% right there off of disabling just one accelerometer sensor. Now the gains are even greater for a F1 processor flight controller. So right now it's at, we don't even know, let's just say, we'll say 35%, I guess. Disable it. Now we're at 10%. So we just saved about 25% roughly. With that said, the gains are going to be even less with an F4 processor flight controller, but like I said, it's really not going to matter on those boards because their CPU load is always low. Like you can turn everything on and it's going to be below 10% no matter what. JC, I think the accelerometer on my flight controller might be bad. How can I test it? Enable expert mode. Go to sensors. Make sure you have accelerometer turned on. And move your multi rotor around. You can just do some slow rolls with it and watch these three lines. If the lines are not moving at all, like this, then it's probably a bad accelerometer. Or even if one of the three are staying flat, then it's probably a bad accelerometer. JC, I used to have a picture of a multi-rotor, but now I have a picture of a big box. Why is that? 
If you see this box, then you probably have a either a custom motor mix or you have done something to change the output pins on the flight controller, meaning you rearrange the, the channel order. That's the best I can explain it. Doing either one of these will make you see a box like this. Why does it say clean flight, but I'm using beta flight? That's because a lot of the coding from clean flight was uh, brought over to beta flight whenever they created it. Uh, clean flight came first, and before clean flight it was base flight. So I would assume they didn't feel like redoing the, the code to fix that. And that pretty much does it guys, that's all the questions I can think of uh, that I get the most common at least. So check out the link that I left for you in the description below for the other Betaflight videos and I will see you there.